who do we follow? Hey guys, I'm Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this year, it's funny to say that because it's now March, but I haven't filmed that much for this year. But this year, instead of doing monthly wrap-ups, I'm just doing wrap-ups. <laughs> um, so how I'm going to start doing them is every 10 books I read, I'm going to do a wrap-up. So this is the first 10 books that I read in 2021. I'm just gonna go through in the order that I read them. I think this is gonna be fine. You guys let me know what you think about this new setup in the comments, um, but there's gonna be two more of these. So they're based, they're roughly for each month because I read about 10 books a month. So this is technically January's books, but yeah. Here we go. To start off, I want to say that I read five audiobooks, two ebooks, and three physical books. The first book that I read um, in 2021 was Bird Box. And this is a horror book and it's by Josh Mallerman. Uh, you guys may have heard of this book because of the Netflix show, or I mean Netflix movie. The book and the movie are, are companions, I would say. They're not exactly like each other, but that's actually how I prefer the book to movie adaptations. I don't want them to be exactly the same, but it was, so I watched the movie way before I read this book and I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was creepy. It was entertaining, it kept my attention. And the book was the same in the fact that it's still horror, it's still creepy, um, held my attention, but it has different things in it, which I liked. Um, this follows Mallory and the two children, girl and boy, and basically they are trying to get to safety because there's something that you can't look at and is causing people to um, kind of lose their minds and commit suicide or homicide. Um, but this was a very good book and I rated it five stars. The next book that I read was The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And this was an audiobook, so I don't have the book to show you. Um, but I got this book from Libro FM and it was um, advanced. So um, I did get to listen to it a little bit early before it was published. And The Wife Upstairs is a Jane Eyre retelling. Um, so Jane Eyre is a classic novel, and this is a retelling. We follow Jane. She's moving into this new town. She's starting over, and she has a little bit of a past that she's not um, telling us about. And she's a, new, a dog walker in this new town, and she meets Eddie, and he is a well-off in town, um, and his wife has disappeared. And that's why I said eligible bachelor, because... He's not technically divorced or a widow, but his wife, B is just missing. Um, we don't really know what happens, but Jane becomes kind of obsessed with figuring out what happened to B. And if you know um, what happens in Jane Eyre, you kind of can have a sense of what's going to happen in The Wife Upstairs. But overall, I thought this was a very good retelling of the classic novel, and I gave this book four stars. The next book I read was Destined by PC Cast. This is the ninth book in the House of Night series. I've talked about this series before on my channel and I actually really enjoy this book. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones in the series, so I gave this one a four star. Um, the series, the books previous to this one in the series I've read before and they were rereads for me. This was the first time I read this one. So that might be why uh, I haven't, I didn't enjoy it as much, but there's just some like repetitive themes going on in this book. Um, and I didn't like it as much as the other ones. I gave it four stars. I do plan on continuing with the series. I think I have five left in the main series. And then there's three books out, I think as of now, in a spin-off series when Zoe and her friends are older. Um, and the shenanigans take place all over the world instead of just in Tulsa. So again, four stars for this one. 
The next book that I listened to is again, it's an audiobook and I got it from Libro FM early, um, was Black Buck by Matteo Ascapor. I don't know if I said that correctly, uh, but this is not my typical genre. I do not read. It's kind of like a contemporary fiction book. So this book is about 22 year old Darren and he works at Starbucks and he was offered the opportunity of a lifetime. So he accepts this offer. He ends up going to a startup in downtown, I think it's downtown New York, downtown Bronx, something like that. And he is the only black man at the company and he faces a lot of racism and um, prejudice in the company. And the book is very harsh in this way because um, there's harsh language, there's race, racial slurs and things like that. And listening to that, instead of reading it, it was like very in my face. Um, I mean, it made me uncomfortable and I know it, that the way it's written is supposed to do that. It's supposed to make you uncomfortable. It's supposed to make you um, think about how other young men like Darren feel in the business world. Um, so while I didn't like a lot of the parts in the in the book, I appreciated what it was doing and what it was trying to the message it was getting across. So I gave this book um, four stars. Then I read A Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. This was a book that came out, um, I think like August in 2020. And this book is about a, a virus that is similar to rabies. It's running wild through the US. Our main character is actually a doctor. Her name is Dr. Ramola or Rams. And we follow her as she tries to get her best friend that's pregnant to the hospital because she's been bitten. And we get that scene pretty early on in the book where um, the friend and her husband is bitten. Um, so Rams is trying to help her friend get to the hospital and they experience a whole bunch of issues along the way. Um, traffic is backed up, roads are closed, the hospital has different procedures where you can't go through the main doors, you have to go through a side door, you have to go through um, like a screening before you can even get to the hospital, the hospitals are overrun. And when I was reading this book, it was like prime time, like not prime time, but we're still, we were still high in the midst of the pandemic of COVID-19. And it was kind of uncomfortable to read this book because we were also facing like overrun hospitals, um, different procedures, barely any traffic on the road. Things were different when I was reading this book and it really made me understand like what these characters were going through, even though um, it's the, d the virus in the book was very deadly, um, very, it spreads very quickly. It attacks the nervous system, um, but I thought it was very creepy. It was very well done and it echoed what's going on today but I thought it was very good. I got it from my library on the Libby app and I gave it four stars. The sixth book that I read this year was Matched and this is actually the first book of a series and it's a reread for me. I read this series years ago when I was in middle school. Um, this book is basically, and it takes place in a dystopian society where the society basically tells you what to do, um, where you go to work, who you get to marry, who you're matched with, and so on. This, we follow the main character, Cassia, and she is in her matched year. Um, and we basically, we really open up on her, like the days before her matched banquet. So she goes to the matched banquet, it's this big event. Um, they get to dress up in these nice dresses. They get really good food that they usually don't get and they get matched with somebody in their town or somebody in a t other town um, based on what the society thinks a good match for them would be. So then you get their dad, your matches data and you get to look through it and all of this. But when Cassia, Cassia's matched with her best friend and then when she gets her matched, her data with the matches on it, she's actually shown another kid's face besides her match and she knows that guy too. 
So this goes through like Cassia wondering like what's going on in the society. Is the society actually telling them what's right to do or are they hiding secrets? And it was very good. It was fun to reread it. Um, and I do think I will be continuing on with book two and book three, but um, I haven't gotten that far yet. But it was a reread for me and I enjoyed it probably more than I did the first time. And I gave this book a five star rating. And then I listened to How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House. And this was another early audiobook from Liberal FM. This was also a debut book for the author. The author is Sherry Jones. And I actually, um, I posted on the publishing day on my Instagram and we were talking for a little bit and she was very excited about her debut book. And it was just fun to get to chat with her a little bit and help her celebrate her debut novel. But um, we follow a couple different perspectives in this book. It opens up with the story of the sister who has one arm and how she sweeps her house. Um, and it's basically like a, like a wives tale that the, grand, the grandmothers and the mothers would tell their children as a cautionary tale um, to listen to their elders and not get in trouble. But um, this takes place in Baxter Beach, Barbados. And this is basically following Layla and her her husband Aiden, and they're trying to have a child. There's lots of trigger warnings in this book. I forgot how many there are. There's infant loss, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, rape, drugs, and addiction all mentioned in this book. But don't let the trigger warnings deter you because it is a very fantastic book. It covers a lot of intense topics but the way that the story is told is pretty cool because it's also a multi-generation story so you get to see um, a daughter's perspective a mother's perspective and a grandmother's perspective and it's all around it's still in um, Baxter Beach Barbados it's about the same types of issues but on a generational uh, level so I thought that was really cool the two characters that I enjoyed the most in this book were Layla and her friend Tone which is actually her husband's best friend. Um, they get mixed up in some drugs. They're selling drugs. Uh, Layla just wants what's best for her and for um, other women and other children in the town. And it's just how people can get really mixed up in the wrong things and who really has your back. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys at all, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and I gave this book four and a half stars. Yeah. Okay, I've been dreading talking about this book, but I listened to An Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, and all of the reviews that I've seen for this book were very good. Like they highly praised this book, five star reviews. I gave this book three stars. I even DNF'd it at one point. I could not stand the characters in this book. I couldn't like, I wanted to change the title from anxious people to idiot people. I know that there's a whole reason behind how they were acting, but I hated it. I hated it so much. I couldn't stand listening to it. I felt like I was listening to an infomercial. Like that's how boring it was. I would even rather watch an infomercial on TV than listen to that book again. But I gave it a three stars because I finished the book and I did enjoy the ending, but for the ending to be enjoyable, I don't want to have to listen to 70% of nonsense. It was not worth it to me. Um, I heard that his other books aren't like this and that his other books are better, but I don't even know if I'm going to pick up another Bachman novel. <sighs> if you read Bachman and you felt the same way that I do about anxious people, um, let me know if there's another book from him that you enjoyed and let me know so I can give that one a try. But I'm very wary about his writing now because it was just, it seems fluffy. Like it's fluffy. I don't think there's a lot of substance to it. And in the end, all of the words and paragraphs and chapters weren't worth the ending for me. And then I listened to The Mermaid from Jeju by um, Suma Han. And this book was very fun to listen to. This is another kind of generational novel. 
Junja is a deep sea diver in her town. So the women in her town are notorious for being deep sea divers and they go into the ocean and they collect fish and um, things that they can eat and things that they can trade out of the ocean. And this is a thing that be is passed down from mothers to daughters, etc. Um, Junja's mother is sick. So Junja has to make the annual trip to the mountains um, to trade and she meets a boy in this in the mountains and she falls in love with him and his name is Sewell. Sewell ends up walking Junja back to her village and they encounter some people and they end up going on this little adventure um, and they get to see some characters that we'll see later on in the book and then as Junja grows up we are getting closer to World War II um, and we see how the troops coming in are affecting how they live their lives and um, how they are able to trade and hunt for food on their own. And then we actually experience a little bit of World War II in the book. And at first I thought it was almost like a magical element that was in the book. But looking back on it, they didn't know what the bombing and like bombings and airships airships this isn't sci-fi um like planes and stuff were so they just kind of identified them with what they knew and they called them dragons because they're flying in the sky and they're shooting fire down on the earth and now looking back on it that makes way more sense than when i was listening to it i was like what do you mean there's dragons there's no dragons this isn't fantasy um, the only thing that I really didn't like about this book is that there is a point of view change really late in the book. Um, when I was listening to it, I was actually building these shelves when I was listening to it. And I thought I switched to a different audiobook. Like that's how different the point of views were. But as you continue to listen, it makes more sense. Um, but I thought it was very good. Again, multi-generational, um, how things impact families and their well-being and their way of life. I gave it 4.5. Um, this is a historical fiction novel and if you guys have followed me before you know I do not enjoy historical fiction normally so this was a big step for me and as these reviews continue to come up like go you'll see that I'm reading more and more historical fiction and it's making me pretty excited that I found some that I can enjoy. Okay and the last book for this wrap up is going to be a Court of Mist and Fury. So this is the second book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. And this is a chunker of a book. So there are over 600 pages in this book. And I ate this book up. It's so good. Um, we're following Feyre and she, I really don't want to, I shouldn't have to worry about spoilers. This has been out for a while, but people are getting back into this fantasy series since the new one came out but I'll like kind of give some I don't know summary without spoilers I guess uh Feyre is in the fa fairy world and she has she's basically in this bargain where she has to travel between two different courts um the fairy lands in this book is split into different courts there's the day courts and the season courts so there's um fall autumn winter summer spring and then the day courts are dawn day and night so she has to travel between one of the season courts and one of the day courts for this bargain and we kind of see the fallout of one and the integration of another and we see a lot of relationships grow in this book and if you know you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying like this book was really good. I have some tabs on it. Um, I know that this is going to be a book that I reread. I don't think I'm going to reread A Court of Thorns and Roses because compared to this one, the second book is way better than the first one. Um, and as the series goes on, my enjoyment level fluctuates with the books, but this one might be... Actually, this is probably my second favorite out of the whole series, but I'll talk about my favorite favorite later. But yeah, I gave this book five stars. It's very amazing. I'm in love with this world. And now that I've caught up with the series, I'm having such a hangover. 
um, for this type of story. And I, uh, you, you'll see. I think I already posted the one video where I went to Barnes and Noble to try to get books that remind me of this, but yeah. So five stars. Um, that's all for this wrap up video. I'm doing it this way so they're not super long, but it looks like it's still 20 minutes long without me editing it. So that's all for this wrap up. If you guys enjoy this new format, let me know. Um, if you've read any of these books, let me know. Or, you know, just say anything in the comments. <laughs> I don't mean to sound desperate, but like, I want to chat with you guys. So go ahead and uh, talk to me in the comments. Look out for the second part of this series, the book wrap up series. And I'll also be posting a Stephen King reading vlog soon and an anti TBR book tag video soon. So keep an eye out for those. If you want to see more bookish content from me, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the like button and the little bell notification. So you guys get notified when I post new videos. Um, keep reading and I'll see you guys in the next one.